Let's start with some questions that you have just in general about what you're struggling with, with this knowledge and as it's sinking in, what are you starting to uh, wrestle with at the moment? Anna, I know you're good for questions. Give me, give me a good question. <laughs> well, I, I guess actually I've got quite a few, um, but overall, just general feeling is like um, is I, th I feel like I get, I'm getting it, which is good. But then yeah. often when I'm trying to uh, think back and I'm looking at my own hands and looking at other people's hands, uh, I'm kind of thinking, oh, yeah, you know, I get a little bit mixed up as to try, you know, and I'm feeling like, oh, I. Do you know I mean getting to the point where I feel confident being able to read someone's hands because this because of all the nuances and stuff? Um, that's that, that's generally how I'm feeling at the moment. So <laughs> kind of it's less less a question, more a sentiment, I suppose. Yeah, you'll have that for the next five years. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that you can count on. Um, uh, you'll get more. The best way to get over that is just to read. 100 hands and then after that you'll have a modicum of confidence okay. uh, after the first 500 you start to think okay i'm getting it kind of i think i'm pretty <laughs> much getting it after a thousand hands okay. you'll start okay. to see that hey listen i am kung fu at this and then after you do 2000 you'll go i don't know anything i'm back in <laughs> kindergarten again so okay. Uh, because you just, you, you keep seeing all these avenues and going, do I really get this? Do I really understand the nervous system and what it's doing? And it's such a energetic, beautiful system. Yeah. Mm, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Next question. I have more questions. I've got quite specific ones. I don't know whether if anyone else has anything more general before I kind of launch into some of these ones please go but go ahead just uh... okay okay so there is something like um if, so if the phalanges are roughly even size does that mean the person is fairly balanced in the energies on that finger because you know we talked about them uh -huh. exactly yeah so okay if if each of the phalanges are perfectly balanced then that means that that we call that the nice garden syndrome. okay a nice garden means that uh, they fit in really well. So you, you, have you ever worked with somebody and they don't seem to have like that much of a niche? They just seem mm -hmm. to be everybody's person. And mm -hmm. they, uh, they, 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 you don't know whether they, where they are politically on anything. Okay. They just don't really stand out on one particular issue. They're just everybody. Yeah, it's okay. No, I'm totally agreeable. <laughs> yeah, it's totally fine. Yeah, I totally okay. agree with you. So <laughs> that's when you have the finger, the finger phalanges in every area. So they're just uh, egalitarian is a good word for it. equanimous. Okay. Equanimous. Okay. Uh, if okay. you have really strong phalanges. Well, that's a different story. Okay. That's so does that also apply for the fingers then? If they are neither particularly long, well, tall or short, is that, they, you know, they're kind of balanced in those energies too then? Not the person. Yeah, you could say that they're, they're, they're moderate, you know? Like I say, mo most often I would look at that in the ring finger. I often look at the ring finger to see how are they in relationship to... Um, their need for attention and astonishment, creativity. And so uh, when, when somebody has a really strong one, then I would talk about it, but sometimes I just, I don't even, I, I don't bring in moderate stuff into the reading. Cause okay. I just go, well, you know, it's not an issue, it's anything, not a right? thing, yeah. okay. right? You just, okay. you're moderate with your budget, yay. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, so, do you know when you said that your index finger points out? It, yeah. Is there any significance if your little finger points out? Yeah, and that's uh, you go into every yoga workshop and every <laughs> self development workshop, and <laughs> that's like me. 
<laughs> all of the and and ask everyone to raise their hand and you're going to see an entire place okay. of people going like this okay. That's, okay. these are this is this is the area of understanding right yes and, yes and let's say just do the combination if this if this is expectations and going you know your own way mm. right what is that you know if this is understanding and it's making connections you're just going in la la land and just going <laughs> out there okay. so this is a very important topic if you are in a relationship with somebody and you got somebody like this and the other person's like that they're going to meet each other on saturdays when they're <laughs> living in the same uh same house okay like, because they need it they yeah. like to have their kind of crazy alone time that's pretty much how it goes okay cool uh, so it so uh, so the the urge lines you know kind of we say like you know the lines in the palm are kind of like to do with the person well, the, the lines of, of the the personality and then the prince of the soul and that stuff so in terms of the urge line is there like a story behind those as in um hang on let me just um, let me just try and remember what my question was trying to work out. So I'm trying to work out kind of the cause and effect of, of, of whether, so the, you know, the prints are almost a, a, a causal thing. They're just there and they, they, you know, give us the energy to impulse, to, well, to input us to do, be a certain way. And then you've got the urge line. So, um, but then, you know, you were saying that the, the lines change as we change. So do the urge lines come before, do they drive out urges or do they come as a consequence of the way we are? Do you see what I mean? Does that make, does that kind They're of They're part sense? of, I think I understand your question. Like, are they, are they, like what, it, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Where did the urge line come from? You can have a, my, my, my daughter had urge lines already when she oh. was born. Mm, okay. So they're they're driving forces within the personality, saying I need to do this, and uh, and I'm urging fulfillment. So this is like a very good topic. Like, so let's say that you have a uh, a a circle on your right ring finger, right? Which mm. who who can tell me what the circle on the right ring finger means? Um, needing um. Like astonishment and, and acknowledgement for you know, an adulation almost of, of, of yeah I a soul they get soul fulfilled mm. if for recognition for when they get recognition right mm -hmm. but does that mean on a personality level let's say they have a short ring finger and let's say that rather than a vertical line in that area they have a square or a horizontal which means they get frozen and they're at they. They went through some experiences where they, at at uh, third grade, they were they were part of Captain Nutrition and the four food groups, and they didn't re practice their lines, and they decided to make the audition in front of the whole cafeteria. And he always thought he was going to be amazing, but then uh, finds out that he was was not prepared, and then he ends up getting all of this. Uh, it was fulfilling, of course, but he did no preparation. And as a result, he had tomatoes thrown at him and everybody uh, laughed at him. And he had to still face his classmates uh, every day after that. Mm -hmm. All right. So the, the, the urge might have been there. And then it got a big no, don't do that anymore. All right. Rather than focus on practicing, he might have made the wrong conclusion there. Uh, practice and instead of growing more fate line of structure and task oriented discipline, which was needed in that situation, he might have said the problem was not that the problem was that people are really mean and they, they're very unforgiving when I'm unprepared, and so they he, he ends up drawing a horizontal line underneath the ring finger. Okay. Let's take another option. Uh, right, let's say that you don't have a circle on your ring finger and you have a urge, uh, the Apollo line is what we call it, the Apollo line, mm -hmm. 
to express creativity. Mm -hmm. Now what? Does that mean it's not fulfilling? So it, that means that, that, that this is, it's not on a soul level. Okay. So it's, there's a, I, I, everyone can relate to going to a workshop and giving creative, creative workshops, whatever you want to do. Everyone can relate to that. Everyone enjoys going to the movies, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's an amusement quality. That's just fine. Okay. Um, and as you, as you do this enough and you do it to where you're like, wow, you know, my wife is really good at making decoupage and putting uh, pictures of horses onto uh, wood and, and she's getting better and better at it. She does it every Saturday, but she's really doing it to help other people and sell it at the local fair. And it's kind of an instrument uh, in order to for her to get connected on a community level because she has a circle on her left thumb saying I love community and this is just my tool in which I do and ever and I get a lot of acknowledgement for that okay okay that makes sense yeah Thank you. yeah so it's a little, a little tricky okay so I have, <laughs> I have a random question I quite you know um does, does neurodiversity show up in the hands <laughs> does neurodiversity show up in the hands um maybe tell me more about that the way that you're using neurodiversity okay so for instance my, my eldest son bless him he's, he's he's uh i know that he's very he's he's got marginal kind of uh i guess autistic tendencies be, you know, oh okay that's yeah. it, okay that's what you call neurodivergent I, I, okay yes, that, yes i know neurodivergent but i don't know their, yeah you're talking you're talking about things like adhd dyslexia um uh, being yeah. slightly autistic mm -hmm. asperger's syndrome yeah yes it does oh okay <laughs> so uh you probably want an answer like, well, how does it show, right? Like each one of those. That's a very, very deep conversation. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. So, exactly, like, you know, we need more time. Is, it, is that kind of a next level conversation? Yes. I'll just give you like a taste of it. Okay. Let's let's use our dear friend, Vishen Lakiani. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Vishen, uh, let's look at Vishen's hands. All right. So, Vision, if you guys don't know who this gentleman is, you might have seen him on uh, uh, every Facebook advertisement <laughs> since every every time you swipe, right? And he he went to get a hand analysis and ultimately went through a process called the shift, which I've explained is facing the shadow side. Anyway, um, so the this. Uh, when you look at his hands, he has, uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but you can see there's, there's that Eiffel Tower, which is called a what? What do you, what do you call that thing? What do you call an Eiffel Tower sitting right in the middle? Oh, I just got a brain, brain fart. Um, Tanya, what do you call it? A tainted arch. Thank you. Yes, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> so it, he has it here and he has it on the other one too. Right, just comes in and is immediately hit with as the wave is coming in, it's getting hit by Eddie. This one's saying, Hey, I love the party, thank you very much, goodbye, no problems. But here, I got a bouncer right in the middle of the index finger saying, Yeah, you're not going anywhere, right? I need, uh, I need to see more girls before you can come into the party. So, that is the that's the tenant arch. Now, having two tenant arches will make you a little bit more. <laughs> just a little bit more uh, uh, mental and distracting. And, uh, and it, it adds an, uh, an aspect that you see patterns really, really fast, electrically fast. And that's good, right? That's a, that's a nice thing. That's why they make great analysts and consultants, right? They make terrible people in emotional relationships. 
And as you as you start to get uh, less sleep and you have more things going on, you get more. <laughs> so now that starts to get you even more driven to distraction, says every attention deficit disorder. Uh, so, but there are other things that can make you act like attention deficit disorder. For example, if you have a bunch of composites, Han, on your uh, fingerprints all over the place that can get you in two places in the, uh, at, at the same time. Okay. Uh, and, and it depends on the stress. There's a certain type of stress that ultimately lands you in ADHD land, dep depending on what it is, where that tenant arch is. He's okay. gonna get ADHD when he gets into power struggles. And if you listen to his book, he's absolutely, it's a story of, his biggest pain was power struggles within his company as he built up Mind Belly and then didn't get a cent as the people took over it. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. that's a, that'll make you really ADHD, really <laughs> distracted. And it may, and it cut, and since you're there all the time, you run into commitment issues. And if you have commitment issues, that doesn't go away when you're in a relationship. And since you see things as a pattern and you say, this pattern is really awesome then that's a very surfacely level of involvement, which ultimately can mean commitment issues that you give a girl the best three months of her life, but then move on swiftly or have things in parallel because you like things in parallel. And that's, okay. that's what your soul seems to gravitate on. And if you look here, there's a, uh, under the Apollo ring finger, there's a dermodeglyphic pattern that normally there's a triradius here and there's normally a triradius here. You might be able to see there's a triradius. It looks like a little uh, V. It goes here like a, like a tenant arch, right? Mm -hmm. It goes right here. Mm -hmm. And they, they measure that one and this one and it goes all the way down to this guy down here. And that's an ADT angle, right? That's a, what they, that's how they measure. Let's just draw a triangle. And if that thing's really narrow, then you get certain things happening for the person. Uh, when there, you also have one here, pretty much on every mount, you can see one, a perfect one right here. You see that guy? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just a little upside down Eiffel Tower pointing toward the palm, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so what happens if you're missing one vision? Right. So when you're missing one, then for some reason, the the uh, ca ca catalytic force that created that dermatoglyphic pattern that says, let's create some tension in the area of um, of creativity and astonishment and the personal applause. And that's that that was like, oh, I don't know. It's like an arch there. I don't know. I don't think that's a good area. So a person then becomes avoidant emotionally. So vision, vision is a, a very funny example because he has fire, fire hands, meaning he's got short fingers, uh, and palm, and he's got an incredibly uh, a need, need to grow in wisdom, hence why he developed Mind Valley University and every other program. So now that can, that can be explained, he's a pioneer and he's doing tenant art stuff. You know, he's doing wisdom stuff. Okay, we're, 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 we're not in any emotional territory so far. We have a iconic fiery Snoop Dogg character uh, who's totally cool, independent and highly creative as a personality who's doing wisdom stuff. And he has this kind of Asperger thing that says, I got to be uh, standoffish when it comes to personal relationships, which then becomes a story of his life. And he's asking me, is it okay that I'm living the pattern that I am? Rotating women a lot to be nice. Is it okay? Um, I said, look, and the hand shows no value judgment. It just shows the way you are. And this is not going to change because it has an architect. You can be, you can look, you can, you can look at the impact of doing that and you can see a very, very uh, shallow life at some point. Yes, you can grow with the experience, but that's slow. That, that's not, you're not going to like my answer when I, when I tell you, you got to do the shift and the hero's journey for three months to 
feel into a new experience of yourself. Otherwise, you're just going to be in this pattern. Okay, cool. There's other things. Depression goes all the way down here. The headline goes all the way down here. Uh, the, the color of the hand uh, shows blue. Uh, alcoholism shows red right here in the area of moon. Sexual addiction, addiction here. Frigidity is here, dark, dark blue or, or white is a straight lifeline. Yeah, so it's always in combination, right? That leads to an outcome. So if a composite can make you ADHD and a tenant arch can make you ADHD, now you have to look at what, what circumstances make those two people act that way. I don't like the classification of ADHD or any of those neurological stuff because there are times when vision is emotionally out there. We just have, he, but he has a uh, condition, or I would say conditions in his life where he does not. Mm -hmm. It's really funny, you know? So in this example, pulling that together, there's a guy who gave me his heart and soul. I know him probably better than any anybody. Mm -hmm. And, Yet I see him coming out and he's got his little scooter in, in uh, Tallinn and he sees me and he comes right by me. That's just what this happens. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? <laughs> so uh, Tanya, question. It's a long time. Hi. Okay. So um, Brent, I don't know what um, you you wanted to cover in today's session, but um, I would really like just to understand better the types of energy, especially where you combine the types like uh, water and air hand. I, I just wanted to see, because I'm still unsure about how do you bring the combination together um, between the sh hand shape and the, is it, do you look at the, the skin? Yes, I look at the skin. Uh, foremost, I look at the shape of the hand and the skin. So uh, I had an agenda to go through the fingerprint types, but I think it's actually good to talk about hand types today. And then we can go back to finger fingertip types, uh, fingerprint types. So you really get the fingerprint combinations better. Um, so in the hand type, the, who can name the four hand types? What are the four basic ways we we categorize people? It's with the elements, um, earth, fire, water, air. Earth, water, air, and fire, right? So good. All right. Tell describe for me an earth hand. Tanya, just stay with me on this. Uh, we'll have a conversation about this. Um so an earth hand um would you have like a short fingers, um, like a blocky kind of palm, yeah. like small hands. Yeah. Skin. Yeah. And, and when you, when you think of that, think of mm. just a, you ever seen those guys that look like a, uh, fire hydrant, you know, their head looks like a fire hydrant. If they, they, they get the little patch of hair on the either side, you just, so the gravity, you ever seen a kid like that too, right? You try to pick up other kids and then there's that one kid and it's just like there's four bowling balls extra in that kid than it is another kid, right? That's earthy. There's a sense of gravity with an earthy person. And they, they, they work with that. They take, and, and so the language that you use to describe an earthy, sorry, my wife has got the, uh, She's cleaning and she left the door open. So I got to wear a parka in my office. So the, the, there's a way that you, they use a language and the way that they verbalize things. Like an earthy person says things are serious and this has gravity. I take my feelings very seriously. I put a weight to things. This is a very solid, what is it? What is the brass tax? What do you mean by this? What's the bottom line? That's an earthy thing to say. And so 
in that case, you can combine two areas, right? You can say it's the fact that they have these stubby fingers and it looks like you could drive a tractor over that hand and they're not going to feel it. That's one way to describe it. Uh, that they, they, there's a thickness to the hand that seems to be irregular. There, uh, there seems to be strength that if you were to, to arm wrestle them with that, it seems like it's already pretty broad. They, if you were to give them a paper cut, you could give them 20 paper cuts and they'd be like, yeah, what are you doing? Right. Whereas even you look at me with a paper and I'm already going to stop it, please. I'm sensitive. Lenny's father is a perfect example. Just this total Blackfoot Indian wannabe, really grounded guy. He has nothing but adventure in his life. He's gone down to ship diving, lives off the land. His greatest dream is just to be there with a big stake and be out in the woods. That's an earthy guy. It's a big brass tax and huggy guy. Like all the earthy guys are just like, you know, loyalty. So they don't like this fly by night stuff. Generally they're entertained, but they don't, they can, they can trust me as far as they can throw me generally speaking, because I have a different hand type. Right. That's airy, airy guys, very fairy guys. Generally speaking, it's like, yeah, what? Yeah. You're not in it for the long haul. Earthy guys are loyal. They're in it for their, their foundational. Right. So he goes to a sweat lodge, for example, and you do this one time. Now you do it two times and three times. Now you're loyal to it. He's been doing it for, I don't know, how many years? 15 years on a monthly basis, practically, right? 15 years going in and building up, waking up, and then building up a bunch of stones out there. That's an earthy thing to do. I'm there for my child's wedding. That's a huge thing. I'm going to be there. If I need to, you call an earthy guy and he's got a heart attack, he'll reroute the ambulance to come see you because the word is... Valor. Here it's circumstantial. I like you, but. Okay. So you're, we're now combining two essential qualities. We're combining a, the skin type that looks like you can see the ridge patterns across the room. And we're combining the shape of the hand. So we can say, an earth person or an earth shape of a hand with thick skin of rawhide with that can withstand a thousand paper cuts would say a pretty down to earth loyal and just does not get anything that what's going on uh, 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 any more than the indigenous people get you know, people, why would people want to live in New York City? So that's the earth. Let's keep a, an example going here. Uh, got an earth guy. So they're thick and they hold things together. They think in black and white. They don't make things complicated. They even like a rough life. They are a good day's pay for a hard day's work and they earned it and there's loyalty and they, they like, they like trust. Okay. Now let's take another skin type. I told you that that's the earth skin type. So just a reminder, it's just drawn with three thick lines or here four. The pen that you choose is not the point, not the, the point one pencil type. It's the thickest one that you use in first grade when you're first learning to draw with a pencil. That's what the lines are drawn. That's an earthy line. So the skin quality line is earthy. So you can say the skin is earthy. The lines are earthy. 
They're solid. How many times has he gone and just done the same way of thinking over and over to create the Grand Canyon of a valley inside the hand? Even trap dirt in that thing. Right? But here, that's a little bit neurotic, right? Because you got you got this concept that if you shock your brain with three months of electric shock therapy, your hands would explode with lines, right? So there's this person, you know, shocking your brain with electric shock therapy is about the most imprecise thing you could possibly do. There's no thought pattern. Let's just shock the hell out of your temples. And it just goes all over the place with no structure at all. Right. That's what a creative guy is. I, I think in distraction, the more lateral thinking I do, the better. So I, I need things to be fun and energetic, else I go to sleep. If I don't get things fast, creative, you put this guy and have him milk a cow, he will fall asleep. In the same way that Vishen Lakiani was the first person to go into a narcoleptic fit, when I tried to shift them again, yeah, it's a fiery fire. Fire goes out when you have to go into feelings. That's why. Uh, so the fire hand is shorter, but you would say these guys are, they both have short fingers, right? They both have short fingers. So what defines short fingers on this guy and this guy? Why is this guy earthy? Well, you look at the palm. And you look at the irregularity of it. This kind of, if you could try to imagine a square, that's a square. Here, there's not really a square. If anything, it looks like it was that this construction of this hand was built by Italians who were arguing over the construction. So it's a little bit goofy. It's a goofy hand. So anytime you see a goofy hand, you're like, God, it's weird. Did you damage that finger or that? No, you're just a weird guy. You're creative. You're fiery. You're interesting. So an irregular hand type or a short finger hand type with a kind of a thinner palm, all things combined. I'm giving very basics. With some crazy lines all over the place, you know this guy's fiery. That's your dead giveaway. But chances are you may be having a hand type that does not have it. You might have one that has that skin with that hand, which means they're thick and they need change all the time. So these are the guys that are like... I need to I need to do something. I need to go, go, go. The firefighters. More hands-on practical stuff. All right. So earth and fire. The difference is these guys are driven by spirit. And if they don't get to do this need for novelty and and dazzle and they don't get that. Then they switch off and they go to sleep. That's why that is what you use for depression, right? So they're trying to, does he look? He smokes out all the time. So, uh, Cynthia, you have a question? Yes, I was waiting for a long time. <laughs> um when the um, fake line in one hand is shorter than the other. So, but you don't have a question around hand types, right? Let's, let's save that right now. I, well, for me, as I learned, how I learned about the fire hand and the earth hand, mm -hmm. uh, a bit different than what you just explained, but. Yeah, tell me, tell me your your 
your definition. I'll challenge it or I'll... I'll uh, uh, first, you, first, you tell me about, please, the fate line when it show, Lord show. I, I, I don't want to talk. That's off topic right now. I want to stay on the hand types right now because if I do that, then it's going to go way off sideways. Hmm. Hand type. Any questions on hand type? No, I'm fine. Okay, so... What you said that you had an idea, Cynthia, you keep going off. Can you participate with us with a video? Because I like seeing your face. What, Cynthia, what it, can tell me, what was the uh, definition that you have of a fire hand? Um, it's a bit different than yours, but. Um... Tell me, you said it's different. So tell me what's different. Uh, well, I, because I depends with who I, you learned, I think. Uh, I learned with other people how the types of hands, and they measure differently than yours with the lines, too. Well, can you tell me what's the difference? What would, what would they, what did they classify as a fire hand? More rectangular hands and short fingers. Yeah, so the traditional, and this is now palmistry, they... they they what they do is they draw a uh, they draw a, a rectangle right here and then they put a, a short uh, a shorter box there so you can then see the proportion that is this is one third and this is two thirds that's okay I agree that's all right to do you can do that but but you got to be a little bit careful if it really is a rectangle hand and it's air. But we'll get to that, all right? So let's go to our airy guys. Let's go to our rectangles. Rectangles are have lines. So what, Cynthia, what would they call a, uh, a pure rectangle? Would they call that air? Excuse me. What I'm would sorry. they call a pure, uh, a pure air? How would they classify that? What do you mean? Well, how would you describe an air hand? Um, which longer fingers? I mean, would you use the box the same? More rectangular, more uh, square. Yeah, so you would draw the, I, I was even assert, you would draw the exact same rock rectangle, but then you just put a 50% point, a line right through it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now you, now if we keep with your example, that's a box, blum, 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 blum. And this is this one third, two third thing going on. The fingers are one third, two third. And this is 50-50. But you'll never get really 50-50. If it's really 50-50, that means those fingers are way down like here. They're going into philosophical area. They're so mental. They can't stop thinking. They're thinking, why, why, why? That's, phil that's philosopher level. And there is a, there's a, there's a way that that is viewed. So they need to be technical in anything straight within the hand, linear, horizontal, and anything long within the hand, that's an airy quality, right? So this is important that, that you really kind of internalize this thinking here to be able to translate the application of, of these, these uh, lines because you'll be able to go, wow, you're really fiery over here right? They're really thick over here. You can have earthy lines and airy lines and fiery lines and water lines all within the same hand. That means that they're emotional about this. They're highly linear and logical about this. They're completely nuts over here on this, and they're true to this. So, Look at the line quality. Look at this headline. Do you see how it just keeps, it's drawn like a ruler, right? That's, that's, that means that you're very airy, you're mental. 
you know, the lifeline can do that. All right. So if the lifeline is straight, this is not a very straight one, but it's marginally straight. Then if it's drawn like a ruler, then they are super, super disciplined with their body. They're super mental with their body, super logical with their body. All right. So David Beckham, you know, he's got, let's see if I got David here. Just compare Vision's round lifeline. Kind of a funny guy, right? Enjoyable, uh, silly, makes fun of himself. Now look at David Beckham. See how it's drawn like a ruler? That's airy. But airy in a funny place because I told you that this is the earth quadrant of the hand. This is where you connect to your body. But how he's connecting with his body is the same way that Roger Federer connects to his body. Discipline. How many soccer balls does he have to kick accurately to get the same predictable result? How many times did he not feel like going out on the field, but he had to because he has playoffs? And that's a very mental driven thing to do. So the way that you can understand these lines is to be able to go, all right, is this a straight one? Then it, we, what are you doing that is that is like mentally societal pressure, language pressure, meaning pressure? Okay, so that is, that's, that's even a kind of going into a thicker, airy line so it's more earthy air expert hand when when lines curve well what do you think that means oh sorry lenny you have a question um yes thank you i just wanted to ask um i don't know but maybe earth skin and fire skin are a little bit more dry than water and air skin or is it yeah, just absolutely completely okay so it plays a part with it the, yeah. the, the hands plays a part with with the type yeah they're very dry people earth fire so earth fire are just wanting to be creative which is not an emotional thing necessarily just being spirited and get things going and get moved to novelty that, that, that may or may not involve emotions. And earth fire, earth wants to be practical. So now you're combining these two worlds and that's an archetype. So that makes you a very drier personality, a worker bee. Work is good, life is good. That's the worker bee combination, earth, fire. So it'd be good to memorize the 12 combinations when I give them to you and just know, okay, earth, fire, worker bee, just spout it out until you know it, until you feel it, understand what earth, fire energy is. And it's a good thing to do, by the way, not just because you want to read hands, but to understand what earth, fire energy is when you're in it. I, then you can start to see I'm not in the mood to worker bee today at all. I'm not in any earth and I'm not in any fire. That's what you got to do. You got to move my body. To get into the mood. Now I'm in our fire. Okay. Water. Cynthia, Mrs. Boxy. How would you describe a water hand? Uh, we, we don't hear you. Uh, you're on mute. Okay, Tanya, how would you describe a water hand? They they look, uh, they're very thin, slender, um, long fingers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have a wa uh just think seaweed. Mm. 
You know, when you look at seaweed, it, it's like they're long tendrils and they don't stand up on their own weight, do they? Very well. Seaweed just blob is sitting there on the water, right? There's, it, it, it has structure, but it's kind of flowing wherever you go. So that is the most flexible soft hand there is. This is the most stern hand there is. So water tends to love these guys. You tend up having the guy who, let's go back to the worker bee example, who wants to but work and build up house after house. She just wants to live there and make kids. So you, yeah, you might see these like guys going, how do you, how do you pair? How does this even happen? And that's, you get these big earth fire guys and they just want the beautiful girl. And they walk around with them. And she just gets to shop down to downtown Bonhofstrasse and buy her nice things because she's Russian. <laughs> I love stereotypes. So, so there, there's a, a softness to the hand. And if you look there, there's a sensitivity. There's a beauty. Uh, there's a, the sweat comes out. So as I was showing you in the FBI, FBI handbook or the fingerprints, finger, fingerprint source book that, of how, how this works, that they were say, announcing that 20 years ago that if you leave any cocktail of sweat, you can see all of your neurotransmitters as well as all the drugs that you're, you've taken and food that you've ingested and whatever's going through your bloodstream. Right. And so being uh, especially uh, brought forward through the sweat, the water. So the more sweaty a hand might be, the more generally speaking, the more water. But that's I can't make that all the time. It's just a generalism. I've seen super dry hands sweat and they're just they can't. They're not very emotional. They're sweaty. They're nervous. But in generally, they tend to be a little bit more soft and it's harder to read the lines. Notice the dermal deglyphic patterns here are a little bit drier. You see the little lines right there. And here, there, you've got a lot more of these tiny little patterns all over the place and they're resilient. And this is, you know, a dried up creek bed. Here, water. It's like it. Sometimes they go underwater. Sometimes they get so bogged down, and that's exactly how they are. They're just bogged down people. They're just constantly, like you ever tried to make an appointment with a bogged down person, and they're just going, yeah, that sounds really good. Great, so can we make an appointment? Yeah, let me get back to you. They're just living in gray. They're just muddy all the time. That's bogged down and their hand literally shows up. You know, a funny thing also, and this is a slight difference. This is, this is bogged down, but sometimes you don't even see any fingerprint, uh, any uh, dermal glyphic patterns. You ever have that person that just doesn't show up? Like their personality doesn't show up? They just seem absent. They just seem like, they're, they're just, they're an empty canvas. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. You can do that. Sure. Yeah. No, that sounds great. Yeah. That's, that's that. You look at their hands and you can't even see any derm dermatoglyphics. So it's like the presence, the more presence you have, the more of these outstanding patterns. Just look at how much presence is here. This guy wants to be known and wants to walk into a room and Wants everyone to see what crazy hat he has on. So water is soft. It's sensitive. It's curvy. So when we're talking about lines, we can say, let's just look at the most obvious one. So I can do all, all of them. If you have a down to earth heart line, that means it's thick and reserved and gravity is just pulling it down right there. That's an earthy heart line. Just 
these guys are just reserved. They say it like it is. They don't make, they don't say boo to a goose. They live a secure, easy, accepting. You don't know really what's going on with any of them. They just keep their cards close to their chest. That's a earthy heart line. Now, I said that if the heart line or the line is curvy, then it gets emotional, right? Let's look at emotional. And now you can be emotional toward the world, where it goes to the index finger in the outer world. Or you can be emotional for what you want. I'm selfish, self-centered. So your heart goes out to other people, curvy, or it goes to yourself. What if it's long, straight, and drawn like a ruler? How emotional are you? No, you just love to talk. So you have two people who give completely different uh, talk shows. Actually, three people. Just look at the comparison. If you know these people, I don't know if you guys know who David Letterman is. He's a was an old talk show host in the United States, and he interviewed in a very funny way, very sarcastic way, everybody that got on to the show. Very mental, very quick. One of the quickest people I've, I've ever uh, met, or not met personally, but seen. Now you got Will Smith, who's emotional. Or Oprah Winfrey, how does she hold it, uh, a talk show? All right. Or let's, how does Ellen DeGeneres hold a talk show because she's so emotional, but she's more self-centered? Got it? So you can say, if you want to keep this elemental system, she's the fiery one the watery tribe, the airy tribe, and the earthy tribe in the area of expressing their emotions. And you can do the same thing all over the place. You can do the same thing for lifelines. You can do the same things for headlines. You can say, this guy is an earthy headline. This one's an airy headline. This one's a fiery headline, and so forth. Uh, Cynthia. Why you say more emotional and more selfish? Because it goes to the um, Saturn finger. Yeah. Yeah. What about you go between both fingers? Then I would just uh, still generally when it goes in between, like her still goes in between both of them. I'm still calling you self self center. Me 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 me. And these guys have a different problem. You, 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 you. All right. So Will Smith, if you saw when he slapped uh, Chris Rock on stage, he got emotional, right? Because his heart line is curved. But if you saw his reaction, he thought it was a very funny joke. They actually have him laughing from the joke. But then he turned to his wife and it's you, 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 you. Now I'm emotional because her, her feelings have been hurt. And this is unfair and we need respect. Go slap Chris Rock. That's a you, you, you response. And then these guys are just understated and over, overplaying and rational and critical. And these guys are standoffish. So it gets really fun, right? When you have a water hand, Tanya, let's say you have a water hand and you have a water heart line that's going to make you pretty feminine, isn't it? Mm. But if you have a water hand type with a fiery hand, uh, line, that's going to make you a diva, isn't it? Pretty sexy. And if you have a water hand type with an earth, that's that means that you're pretty business oriented and you're a hot woman wearing those pretty, those big shoulder pads on in a man's world. 
being very uh, reserved and private, but sexy. And a water hand with this, she can't stop. To, she's a cafe queen, can't stop talking to her friends. And keeps analyzing, going, what do you think is the best school and all that stuff? Then and then and then and talking it out. Oh, this is fun. Let's continue. What happens if you have an earth hand? Actually, I don't want you guys to uh, get off. Uh, I want you to see it. Um, where is my her? Let's let's go women here. Water. So just sweethearts. Water. The heart line goes all the way up to the index finger, right? Water. Water. Water, 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 water. Sweet, sexy, beautiful, sens sensual. Water, personality type, and the way that they express themselves is very watery. I would say that's a very watery feminine person. Let's make them even more watery. Those were a little bit uh, longer headlines, but now that's a very watery feminine type, but now they have a straight heart line. See how that thing is just drawn like a ruler straight across? So now they're a little smarty. Smarty pants. So now we have the smart, beautiful girl. The mental, the rational, beautiful girl. Gal Gardot is super good in interviews. Super sharp. Stands mentally strong all the time because her heart line is drawn like a ruler straight across. So that just makes them a little bit more critical, doesn't it? But now let's take a watery with, let's go back to how soft these people are. It's all about feelings and virtue and all that they probably played really into beauty and caring for ideals for other people. Water, 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 water. Now let's make them sexy. Let's give them a fire heart line, a me-ish energy. I get what I want. Now we get a different type. Now they're a little bit more of a Ambrosia, Alessandra Ambrosia model. Sexy, intense. I get what I want. I become iconic. I use my sex appeal everywhere with as many short skirts as I can, fiery. It's a very sexy combination, having a fiery heart line. What is a fiery heart line? What say? What's your question? Where did where did you find the fiery uh, heart? When it uh, goes up uh, in the middle finger. Remember, if you're paying attention, we got watery, we have airy, we have earthy, and we have fiery. Mm -hmm. Good. So, got the picture. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's let's play this game a little bit more so that you get it. And let's just check. Earth. What happens if you have an earth hand for a woman? That's an earth hand, not a water hand. And the heart line drops really bottom down here. Think work. Earth work. So these are worker bees. 
not so and we're not into supermodel anymore are we we're into just handling circumstances managing stuff that's an earth hand all right so let's go, let's make it even less sexy let's make it the heart line even shorter right let's look at that woman right there, is she sexy? The heart line is pretty, it stops right there. Bump, 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 bump. I don't know if you see my cursor. Or here. It's starting to look like a dude. So the earth is like, where's the estrogen? What happened here? What happened to the hand? They're all... Very, very solid, reliable. Had sex on every Christmas until they had their kids, and that's it. That's how about important sex was. Right? And then let's look at an airy woman. With, hey, shout out. With what type of heart line? Air plus what? air and earth okay so you want an air hand type with an earth earthy heart line now you have a highly highly smart woman air with a very reserved side it's great to be a physicist you're not going to go and walk down a catwalk when you have an air hand with a very reserved you'll just take your job very serious Generally speaking, uh, give me, um, let's go to fire. Give me fire plus, uh, I don't know, water, water heart line. What happened to their face? Don't they look fiery? Look at those eyes. Do you think they have any problem saying no to the waiter if they're if they didn't if they order the salad and got something else? Look at the danger in the eyes. That's fiery. That's a that's the hand type. So the hand type gives them these sharp features in their eyes. They look, they have this, don't you cross me. And they have their short fingers and compared to the rest of the hand. And if, and most of these examples, probably, especially this one, I don't even have to look. You see all the wrinkles all over the place. She has fire plus fire and her hand and her face gets all fiery and gets more wrinkly later. But these are sweethearts, by the way, they have a heart line that generally goes out. But if you bring more of that, you know, you, you can have, I'm still building up my collection, but uh, sorry, let's look at fire water. Fire water, now let's mix it up. Now we're bringing the energy of the feminine in there. It's not the dominant energy because I said it's secondary. Fire, which is the shape of the hand, the short fingers, but now the skin is soft. Look at how zany they are and fantasizing and playful and exaggerating, magical. That's fire water. So let's go to the archetypes now. I'm giving you a taste of it. So what happens then when you combine a, 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 a let's go back to uh, my page here. From a personality standpoint, you have a earthy person with crazy lines, 
Lenny said, that's an earth fire hand. Great. That means that he, he's, he's still within the category that loves building, but he's the, of this, of the next level of the building types. He's the spirited one. Let's keep it going. If he has an earth hand, but he's got water skin, that can happen. Of the earthy types, he's the caring one. And everybody's wet nurse. And super sensitive as a guy. And very compassionate. Let's do earth plus earth. That's salt of the earth. That's about as basic as it comes. Earth plus earth. Now you are a primary. You're, what you're not is fire, air, and water. <laughs> you're just earth. You're just solid, reliable. A farmer married at 18 and you're happy to just uh, uh, inherit your dad's farm and wake up every day at 5 o'clock and plow. Fine. That would kill me. Two days of that would kill me. What about a lifetime? Earth plus air. Now you're up within the earth tribe that loves to build. You are the smart person. Guess what that is? I'm an expert. They're still, but they're practical and an expert, right? Practical and smart. Oh, this is fun. Let's do this one. Water. What happens if you have a water hand with hands that look like this? That can happen. It happens It's a, as a theme of trauma. Generally speaking, why is life so tough for you? Why is a woman who is so feminine acting like a prostitute from Nicaragua. What is it that has you feel so damaged that the only way for you to get into your feelings is to drink a beer and do drugs? That's, that's what you get into a lot of very dangerous situations when you have skin like that with a woman who's naturally in her feminine, but holding on to her feelings, protecting herself. From her feelings. Yes, that changes. If you do the shift hero's journey, your hand changes. But I have I have people who come through like that. Water earth. They're very deep and very protective. And you know, you still waters run deep with that. They have a lot of skeletons in their closet and usually a lot of very bad rape situations and stuff like that. Water earth. Water, what happens if you have water? Within, but you have these crazy or uh, crazy lines all over the place. Well, within the feminine tribe, you're very, very creative and fun. That's called passion, isn't it? It's called being electrically sexy on stage. Water, fire. Let's say you have water hands. Of within the feminine tribe, but you're the smarty pants, air, long, long lines, long lines, and it has this kind of office quality. Then you're Mrs. Perfect all the time. A little bit more Kara, Kara Knightley about it. So within the tribe that feels, you're the smarty one. Kira Knightley does not cry very easily in her movies, does she, in Pirates of the Caribbean? She's the one who's stoically always smart, always solution-oriented. That's an airy quality. Water, air. And then water, water is a pure nothing, pure love. And everything, just like water is to a cup, her entire life is defined by the relationship she's in and the guy who's holding her. And, a, and they need a lot of love. And their whole life is defined by love. Okay, now let's go to fiery. 
if earth fire is a worker bee, what is fire earth? Well, fi if fire is spirited and egoistic, right? Individualistic is a better word if you don't like egoistic. Just stay with creative or individualistic when you think of fire. It's me, the more in me-ish, I'm going to go my own independent way. That's more fiery nature, individualistic. So if you're fiery and you have earth hands, then this is a person who's very iconic and needs to use his hands practically. So he's the firefighter, constantly working. In, and he doesn't, you don't have to be a firefighter but you work in high pressure zones or you're the person who's managing all of the, uh, the cuts for an organization in a very bad mer merger acquisition deal. And they bring in that guy, the fire earth guy who can make the biggest transformation and make the hard decisions unemotionally cut a thousand employees because we, the company, company must survive. That's a fire earth. That's also a Donald Trump a little bit. All right. What, what happens? Fire, fire. Well, then you're just pure creative. You're just like Yoko Ono if you're a woman. Little Kim, you're provocative. Fire is provocative. Dangerous. They like it dangerous. Don't feel sorry for them if you see them in a defensive danger. That's what they want. You think Donald Trump doesn't like danger? Fire air. Well, that's a very playful fire. You're within the spirited, individualistic, creative, provocative tribe. You got a head on your shoulders. So that means that you're more transformative, open. Maybe you're really good at a transformational coach. You have a very positive energy. You know, you're still live learning a lot, but you're, you, you're, you're being and who you are and your world that you love to play in is still transformative like everyone else. You're just the smarty guy. And then fire plus water within the, the tribe that is the creative, energetic, activist tribe, you're the emotional one which makes you even more of an activist and more of a uh, playful part, more spontaneous. There's no earth or air holding you down. There's nothing holding you down on your ground and, you're, and you certainly don't have a head on your shoulders sometimes. You just get caught up in the moment and you create movements that way. Great activist. Good. Now let's finalize with our air tribe. Air, if air is our smart tribe, and it doesn't mean that they're necessarily like IQ smart. They just act it that way. I've seen an incredible amount of genius coming out of the earth tribe. But let's stay with the air tribe. Air, air tribe love to act abstract. They love that abstract world, air. They love to think it, uh, what does that, what does this mean? What is, what happens when uh, Dostoevsky uh, meets transcendental meditation? That's a dumb question that it absolutely an air person would ask. So they just really love learning and they use these knowledge systems in order to develop them and make connections. And then hopefully uh, you have to study whatever they learned, develop. And they're, they see everything and they read and research. That's the airy tribe. So if you have air hands and you have an air, air skin and God forbid you have an air headline, and an air heart line, you're about as mental as they come. And when I try to express emotional topics, you're looking at it logically. You're only in the left side of your brain. 
just sitting there going, well, what does this mean logically? Yes, I love you. I make you tea every morning. Can't you tell? As the woman pours the drink right on him. So air is just logical. It's just the part of your brain that just loves to be right. Set expectations. And critical. Now, within that knowledge base, intellectual, rational tribe, there are people with really thick skin, which means that they're airy, but they still only have their eyes on the facts. It's called being observant and being detached. So they're airy, but they're only thinking about how this works, like putting things in a methodical structure, doing things with loyalty, not being emotionally evolved, obviously. And a lot of drama queens that are water fire end up with the air earth guy, the football player who's just really good looking, smart and uh, uh, and does his thing and over and over and builds his house and she just does all the drama. He likes her drama and she likes the stability and the paycheck. Air, earth, water, fire. Opposites attract often. Now, air, earth, uh, let's say air and fire. Well, within the tribe that's very thinking, they got a lot of creativity going on, don't they? There are a lot of... So these guys can't stop thinking. And you got to hit them with a sledgehammer to get onto Earth. Get out of your head, man. Get into your heart, your feelings, your empathy. Oh, my gosh. Which works in the positive and the negative. In the positive... There are the visionaries and illuminators. In the negative, they're schizo they, they drive you nuts with their crazy lateral thinking all the time. They're amazing conversationalists in the positive, but make them nervous and say, look, the house bill, I know you're on a very thin budget, but the house is, we need uh, at least a, another renovation and it's going to cost you double. <laughs> now they don't know where to begin. I don't know what I'm going to do. And now I got four things and I'm also studying this and I got that. <laughs> Air fire. Very distractible. Air water. Within the tribe, that's very thinking. They're very connected to the, emotionally, making them very per, uh, good artists and perfectionists. And very soft and very good at abstract thinking and working in a very sensitive, gentle, polite, fair environment. Steve Jobs, very critical, smart guy. And air water. Okay, so now we go to these types here. And this guy who looks like he's lost in time, this hippie looking dude, his name's Tamo. He, named, he renamed himself Enelog. I still call him Tamo. And Tamo is a, uh, a poet that believed that there's energy in all of reality. He studied under Carl Jung and Gurdjieff, you know those guys, and he worked with elemental energy it's the same way Carl Jung did, using the 2,000-year-old the, the Greek system of earth, air, fire, and water, and then working with melancholic and all that stuff, sanguine. And he ultimately concluded that he goes, well, look, if you have earthy and you're practical, then there must be a way to define how earth people are. And he couldn't stop thinking and he ended up founding a society of people that literally spent from morning to evening thinking about this topic. They had money inherited and they spent the rest of the time playing with puppets 
and imagining what earth, air, fire, and water energy was because they believed it was working with magic. And uh, they got pretty far with that until he died. And then we, you know, the predecessors, uh, when, I, when I finally found the, uh, uh, the people that are hanging, that still followed his cult there, earth, air, fire, and water, well, uh, they, they gave me all of his literature. Now, the, the amazing thing is that Tamo, Mr. Lost in Time, he was, he was really into all of this hippie stuff in the 60s, and he was a founder. He believed that water consciousness is a type of consciousness as much as fire consciousness and earth consciousness and water consciousness. And they believe since you can work with consciousness and everything's consciousness, that you could start playing with these energies and be magicians. So they could do a bu bunch of fun stuff. But the first thing, he was, a, he was a painter and then a philosopher, and people would invite him literally weeks at a time to come and just talk and just channel. Anyway, so he came up. You may recognize that this is from my Crimson King Crimson album. That's total hippie stuff. That's his artwork from King Crimson. And uh, so he imagined that that's fire earth, all right? Just fiery within the fire tribe. There you got the, the guy who are just really heroic and practical, fire earth. And then, they, and then the opposite, earth fire was like a slave, just working. Earth is first, fire second. Let's stay with the fire example. So if that's fire earth, then you've got this uh, joker looking dude, the fool, fire water. And then you have a uh, fire air dude who's totally clever and witty. He's smart, but he's spirited, right? So now you got the three spirited types I was just talking about. If you have an earthy, let's stay with our earth fire. She so can act like a slave, but very accepting and very supportive. That's a very earth fire thing to say, support. Now, what happens if you have an earthy air? Well, now you have somebody who is very strict and fact-based and dry. You know, they call that kind of a, 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 a the woman when you go down to her basement. So she she saves every penny and she retires a millionaire, but acts like she she has saves all of her retirement. Earth air. And then what am I missing? Earth water. Got to be earth water somewhere around here. Uh, oh, yeah. Earth water. Supportive, natural, uh, connected to nature. You're down to earth, but you're in your emotions, which means you blend very well with people. Earth one. Now, let's go to water. So you could be water, air, which means that you're, you're beautiful and you're smart, which means you're very imaginative and you're using that feminine side to explore your imagination. Or water, water, earth, which means you're deep and you have to drink beers in order to express your feelings. Otherwise, nobody knows. Water, earth. Or water, fire. You're just sexy diva. And he was imagining air. All right. So air, fire, the guy who's got all the crazy ideas within the intellectual type, he's fiery. He's creative. He's a magician. Air, fire. Air Earth, he's just observing, detached. Air Earth. And air, water, which means that you're just, your air is driving it. So air is being knowledgeable, but knowledgeable about your feelings, which means that you're being a little bit psychological and very critical sometimes. Air is still first, not water. So anyway, that's all fun in games with these guys. Uh, what, what made this uh, an outstanding system is unlike 
psychological systems, even Myers-Briggs, which was very arbitrary, extroverted, introverted. Can you really divide a person into 50-50, extroverted, introverted, or sensory, intuitive? Can you really do that? That's the Myers-Briggs way of doing it. Psychometric tests were failing because they don't know how to divide the consciousness and kind of equal parts. But these guys were doing it very well. Earth, air, fire, water. And actually, the Greeks were doing it very well. Aristotle was doing it very well. So Richard Unger, who was the founder of the Institute of Hand Analysis, tried every system, including Myers-Briggs, and I did too. I was a champion of that for many, many years until I just got exhausted with it, saying, God, how can you have the same hand type and you have, you have two different test outcomes? So... Uh, but when I fell into his system, it's an incredible amount that happens to have everything to do with the, with the way that people are that I observed and their faces look exactly the same. I don't show this to anybody, but just look at them. I mean, seriously, water, air, water, earth, they're the deep one, fire, water, Water fire, which is like sexy, air, air fire, air fire, the scientists, earth water going into the deep, uh, air earth, they all wear those kind of glasses. I'm talking about their hand type and uh, fire air. And then you've got fire earth, kind of stern, heroic, sometimes a little dumb on things, earth fire, soulful, deep into the body soul food, and then air, water being in the poetry, and then earth, air being a little bit more less in your feminine, earth, air. Okay. But what's interesting is that as you organize 26,000 people's hands under the category of their hand type, you get the same facial structure all the time which means that I can look at your face and see your hand. I can look at your hand and draw out your face. That's when you know you, you're pretty good at hand analysis. I challenge any palmistry book to look at a square and a circle, or whatever, and be able to draw out a face from that. So it's called phenotyping, and it's done all the time. And they're not, they're not hand analysts doing it. But now you, nowadays, you can take the hand and give it to a phenotyping lab and they'll be able to draw out the, the actual uh, facial structure. So you're looking at the energy of a person in their face, fire, earth energy, air, water energy, water, air energy. And you know, when you close your eyes or if you know somebody, gosh, they have a lot of whatever that is, a lot of this consciousness when you're around Donald Trump, you've got to feel like things are going, always things are happening, we're going to go. But when you're around uh, whatever her name is, the Italian, Bella Chucci or whatever her name is, you get se sexual feelings, sexuality. What is your type? And how, how do people feel around your energy? I can see it in the hand. Yeah, go ahead. So, Brent, um, so I know, like, we, I think we, you know, you and I have talked to this before, but you know, because I've got different hands, um, and so, you know, kind of like, as uh, so if you if your left hand is is one type and your right hand is another type, then you know you've got different energies for you know your internal what kind of you know yeah. And, and, and out external and then so how does that um kind of exhibit on your face well in general you have to merge them so i haven't done a left hand mapping versus a right hand mapping but i'm guessing it's right hands dominant i'm guessing but in general um it's something i haven't i don't i haven't had a strong enough database to be able to search that I do, I do see left hand, right hand stuff all the time, but I don't, I, I don't have a strong enough correlation database to be able to organize that, the answer to that question. 
Well, I know it's generally, it's not that different. Maybe one hand's fire earth and the other one's earth fire. You're not going to have an earth fire hand with a water air hand type, unless there's something retarded about that part of your body. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, but, but when you've been talking generally, then would you say you've been going more on the right hand than in the left hand then? Uh, I don't, I look at the more interesting hands. So I know that's not a very fun answer, but the more interesting or more dynamic a hand is, the more that person is generally going to favor that as an expression out in the world. Okay. Now we haven't talked about dilemmas yet, but when we get into the dynamic of a hand, I, 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 you've already heard me say some dilemmas you didn't realize. For example, what happens if you have a water hand with an earthy heart type? That's a dilemma. A water wants to surrender and be in love and earth wants to be in control and self-reliant. Now who's going to win? That's a dilemma. And that person feels it. Don't think that that's, they, they found a solution. They have that problem. And, that, and we all have these parts in us that are competing, just like we have a brain that doesn't shut up when we're trying to do meditation. We have parts in us that are not aligned to what we want, and they're doing it anyway. So that's important for you to understand that when we're looking at the hands, we're looking at many different motivations that are all in competition. Right now, I'm talking about the hand type, so I'm talking about the basal structure of your brain, the base. If you know, like, the way the brain is structured, there's a, there's a right side and a left side of the brain. And there's a judgmental side or, let's say, a thinking part of it. If you look at the right brain, it's very energy-focused and present-focused, doesn't know anything about the future and past, parallel processing, that's the right brain and has a thinking portion, which is in the front and a feeling portion in the back. So you're talking about feeling and solving problems as they are today and right in front of you. And you have a left brain, which is about the understanding of your past and your future and how you feel about it in the past and the future, which makes you very anxious and very angry, and justifiably so, All right? Damage to these hemispheres cause it somebody to be constantly in la-la land emotions because they, they damaged their left brain, and they're just nothing but space and energy everywhere. Or you damage the right hemisphere, and they're just... They have no spatial awareness at all. They don't know how to think in a hologram. They're constantly in a linear-based world, and you throw them something, and they, it just bounces right off their chest. So to answer that question about what the right hand, left hand, what all that stuff does, you're able to vacillate as a body. So when we're talking about this, we're talking dominance. But there, everybody can access another part of who they are. But we're talking archetypal when they are in their normal comfort zone most of the time. This is what we're talking about in hands. That's most of the time in general. Cynthia, you have a question. A few points. So for you, the fire hand has many lines. Um, could be that also the many ha many lines could be also water. I mean, at least for me, because it's like handle a lot of water in your hands. That means the, all the lines you have too. It depends on the quality of those lines. They are very thin, for example. If they're, you need super, water. if they're super thin, then I would say, yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. But they have to be super thin. Or the shape of the hand has to be watery before I start talking about it. So 
when you look at this, first get into the energy. When you say air, water, let's say water, fire, that's passion, right? You might want to memorize this. This is a very useful table to just get internalized at a bus stop until you know it. Water, air, refined. Air, water, abstraction. Fire, water, expressive. When you know that, then you can go, wow, you're a very expressive person. Now let me look at your hands, right? You're a very powerful person. Let me look at your hands. So let's just keep with your water, fire example. If somebody's water and they have some crazy thin lines all over the place. That's a lot of fiery energy, right? So does she have air lines, earth lines, fire lines, water lines? She's got crazy lines all over. So, but that's fiery, but they're really thin in their quality. So they're emotional. Yep. So therefore she's emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, well, that's what I mean, because when I, I learned that I see all those little lines, for me, was always a water hunt. Yeah, but that's in that quality. You can see the sweat just glistening off of her hand already. Right? That's a water quality. But we take those same number of crazy lines, and let's put it in a different hand type, like this guy. Does he look very emotional? Try to wake up and have sex with this guy. How's that going to feel? How do you think it's going to be being around him? Try to see the sensuality here. It's not that amazing. He's dry and funny, though. And he's funny because he's got these crazy lines all over the place, and he thinks in very strong paradigms. And so he's he, an earth, earth fire? No, he's an air fire. See? Long fingers, long palm. Long fingers, long palm, Mr. Mr. Quadrangle. Okay. Rectangle. So just look at their faces, air fire people. All right. Don't they kind of have the same face? Kind of nerdy, detached. Are they sensual? Are they emotional? No. And their hands are not either. Well, fire will not be feisty also. Uh, yes. Fire is feisty, but I don't go feisty on them, generally speaking, unless you parked in their parking spot. Generally speaking, fire is feisty, so you have to be fiery first. So if you go fiery, then you're looking at, let's look at our fiery tribe. You park in his parking space. Now we're going to have trouble. Park in any of these guys' parking space. That's the fire earth tribe. And you, if you want to argue about it, you can talk to one of their team of 20 lawyers. I don't have time for it. And then they'll remove your parking space, literally from the planet. That's fire earth. Work on circumstantial level. And not argue. Send a stern letter. Tell them to shut up. But see, now you can't say just because you have fiery land, lines that, or fire as your second, as it's fire as your first, it makes you temperamental. These guys have fire in their second, and they're very humble, accepting, warm, genuine. George Lucas probably needed to have a fire lit up on him. Uh, he was not, he was kind of disagreeable sometimes, but he was, he wasn't temperamental he withheld that temperament most of the time and that cost him i think a lot of the input of the creative force that happened after he uh when he did star wars he had a lot of people uh working in star wars with a lot of creative input and there was a lot of energy there but then he withheld he became big and he created the crappiest trilogy ever because he was very very stoic and understated and supportive. And I'm just going to write this and everyone likes it. No, you needed to have confrontation in order to develop a better creativity. <clears throat> so, and it's, yeah. For last time you say, the first time I saw you in the interview, that yeah, you see in my hands more a water shape or something, a water. 
But no, uh, you never people, said that your hands are water. Earthy. Because some other people uh, look at my hand and they say it's a fire hand because it's like more rectangular and short fingers. So yeah, let's look at hands now. So if we play the game, uh, yeah, we can just raise your hand. We don't have to go into the thing. Or now let, let's just do uh, let's do Cynthia right now. Han, yeah, Cynthia, keep your hand up. Both. Yes, please. All right, guys, is this a thick hand? Is it a long hand? Is it a fiery hand? Or is it a watery hand? Just follow exactly what the, my, the, the template that I showed you. Is that a thick hand? Is that a slender hand that looks like seaweed? Is it a rectangle, long finger, long palm, detached hand? Short, short, short palm. Short fingers, broad. Yeah, so it's a very thick hand. Spur. Now you look at the skin quality, and now we're into our secondary. Now she's got a difficulty here because within the skin quality, uh, she has a very soft, soft skin. So, see, that's, yeah. So, the, within the skin quality, there's hands is not square, it's rectangular. No, it's not. It's as solid as it comes. Thick and solid. You want to see a rectangular hand, I then look at the examples I showed you. But you think it's rectangular in your system of comparison. But I'm saying I'm within, within a system of comparison of 26,000 hands, your hand is not rectangular. Mm. So it's a square, you see? Yeah. So it's earth and water. Yeah. So they're very supportive. But when you look at that, if you look at the supportive, within the supportive tribe, she's got shorter fingers, especially. So now she's in the feistier category of the supportive tribe. Com compounded with her heart line, that's very self-centered. Now we start to get into- Self-centered because it goes to the middle? Uh, yeah. Me, 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 but supportive. So that's a dilemma already, right? So I do this for you, you do this for me. So me focused, but still the shape of your face, the architecture of your body, the energy that's within you is a very supportive energy, grounded earthy energy with a fiery spirit inside you. And water, you say, too? Yeah, it's the sensitivity, the supportive, the kind, the gentleness. So if I then go and with, with just an academic approach, walk through every profession, right? And you have to do it in comparison, right? If I... Look through the professions that are very care-based professions. I find a lot of earth water people. For example, nursing, uh, people that are very happy to do the strong administrative work too. It's very, uh, you see a lot of that and they're caring for it. Like you, you walk into my, uh, the, the, the child care and the woman, uh, the thicker the hand generally, the more the management. So you go closer to the founder of the organization, you're going to find a thicker hand, hand than the person opening the door, generally speaking. But that's generally it's a supportive kind, you know, just dealing with it and, and very basic. And they work from instincts mainly. And they think their instincts are right. As My profession is completely different. Because I, I work at tourism, hospitality. I don't like nothing about nursing or 
of the caring system much. I'm more an interpreter. Um, yeah, so let's go into the earth water hand type for a little bit. So it's in the combinations where the magic is. You can't have a conversation on two things, right? You can't say because you're earth water, you're going to be uh, naturally the person who is going to be founding a children's hospital. You can't say that. You have to look at the fingerprints and all the combinations that ultimately not only triangulate, but give you down, get you down the rabbit hole to a very specific piece. Right? You have to play generalities and you have to relax your mind in order to go into the weight, into the clay. Right now, we're just working with the clay. <laughs> we're going to make you out of earth, water, clay. That's where we are. Yeah, but I haven't, I haven't done uh, any children's hospitals. Fuck, I'm just working with earth, water, clay. Relax a little bit. Just trying to get the foundation. But what you need to know is that we're talking in the broadest strokes within the tribe that you are. It's earth, water. And now when you look at that, you just go, okay, where do we see earth, water people? Well, if you remember my, say, earth, water, earth, water, air, fire. All right. You said your, your hand length is long, right? Those are long. This is long. This is an air. Right, their face is long, and they have a little fiery nature, just to be exact. Air fire, so they have a dangerous look, and they got long fingers. They have a lanky, long body. All of them are air fire. Do you see Cynthia? No. Yes. Okay, so that's air fire. They love to talk, analyze, detach. Generally speaking. But you have an actress and a journalist, and she'll argue going, I never loved acting. And she'll go, I, it depends. They might even have the same need for recognition, but you have to be able to work with the combinations. Now, let's look at the earth water tribe. If that's air fire, let's look at it. But let's look at a couple more since you think you're airy. Like that's an airy. I don't think I'm airy at all. Fiery. Fiery, excuse me. Okay, well, let's look at some fiery. I do agree with the fire, but you have to look from, I'm looking at the archetype of the hand type. Uh, you have a fiery heart. Let's look at a fiery, uh, this is more closer to your type. It's a fire, and you're moving in with a little bit of earth. So you got a shorter finger, earth. All right. Got it? That's more fiery nature. It's a little provocative. It's okay. Now let's go to fire, let's say fire. And you can have fire water. That's the fire tribe. Short fingers, super, super short. Crazy lines. All right. Look at the, the look at the face structure. That's fire. Now let's look at earth, water plus fire. Now we have much more fun, supportive, genuine. Notice the face has just gotten softer like yours. The cheeks have just gotten rounder. You understand? There's still intensity, and they're still zany, but they're just a little bit more, and they're more outgoing because of their fired heart line, but they're, they, they, there's a much, much deeper gravity, and the body weight is increased. Do you agree or disagree? Disagree. Okay, what would you uh, what do you see that I don't see? 
Well, um, well, not disagree in the terms that you see in the people, but I disagree how uh, my nature is and what you say about me doesn't go too much agree this. What have I said about For, for example, if you say, uh, if you read my hands and you don't know nothing about me, and then I hear, um, there were a few things that can, I can be agree, but the others, they're not, are not related to that nature. I haven't read your hand so far. Mm -hmm. but what I, you, you haven't booked a hand analysis with me so far, so I haven't read your hands. What I'm talking about is only broad strokes at the moment. And if you look at the earth water, you have to be able to triangulate and quadrangulate. We'll get there. So earth water in general, and any one of you guys can jump out of these boxes. Do you understand? Because a human being is a human being. It doesn't fit in a box very well. But when you talk about this earth, the, the power of compassion, they have the talent of being kind, warm, supportive, and generous. They are great humanitarians and healers. They laugh from the gut. They are vulnerable, real, honest, take people's feelings very seriously and bond. They are ruled by their senses and gut instincts and the glue for others. Making everybody feel good, they can be very obligated or self-sacrificing and their hospitable nature makes some great restaurant owners, comedians, veterinarians, nonprofits, healers, empaths, daycare workers, doctors, and nurses, right? That's a pretty broad spectrum, right? To be a everything from a healer. Well, I'm kind of a healer, that's true. Because well, a veterinarian. But you've got to be able to look and go, we're only talking about the entry point within the tribe of this. And you're fighting right now on whether you want to belong to this tribe. You want to belong to the fire tribe. No, but not specifically, but I you see- You said you're a fiery type. So I don't follow but you. The fire hand, to me, was a little bit more fiery. The form you, of that. Yeah, I'm, yeah, you're okay. But you were saying that you're not a fire and you disagree. So I'm now trying to send you, if you're not this type, then no, you- No, not be, air, I say. I say it would be with some, um, how I read it my hand before. Right. So what would be your first and second fire. type? Fire and then what? Mm, don't think too much. To me, water with a bus with a lot of lines. So I don't think it will be much water. It will be fire. Probably if you say earth, could be in some of the extremes here. Um, more fire. I've never thought about water in my hand, actually. Okay. So if you, now you say because the softness, probably because it's very soft. So look at these four hand types. Which one do you look what, when you just at a glance in your hand? Where do you where does your mind go? To the top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. The fire, um, the fire style of the person there. I think there are different varieties of the fire thing. And regardless so, of what your mind wants to do, just look at the pattern the recognition of what's in front of you. Okay. Well, I don't have long fingers, so definitely it's not water or air. So it will be between fire or maybe earth. So if you look at your hand and I put a gun against your head and said, of 10 people that are going to vote against your hand from pattern recognition, are you, regardless of what you think you want to be or think you are, from a, just from a academic point of view, from a pattern recognition? Well, it's not what your, I, I just thought. It's people, they already read it to me. Raise your hand again, just a second. I'm not saying what I thought, so just, I, I have my rant reading before. 
but don't take me pictures, please. <laughs> so just look at what uh, what you're saying there. All right, so you got this hand type here. Is it more like that one to the left here? Or is it more like the bottom one right here? Or is it more like the one to the right? Or is look it the like length, the one to the, the here? Look the length of the the No, just the look point. at the look at the meatiness of the hand. Look at the volume of flesh on that hand. Does it look more like the left hand or does it look more like the right? Do you see in the lower part if it's square? Yeah, I see it's definitely square down the bottom. Or I see it's the thickness of it. No thickness, but it's not square. Yeah. So here, and this is where it takes a lot of work here. I understand what you're doing. So you, your brain wants to go, well, because he's square, then he's, he's, uh, he's, he's an earth hand. So now we're gonna get into a, a combination that we haven't talked about. And that is what happens if you have a square hand, right? With that is more rectangular like. Now you have an earthy, airy hand, right? could go the same thing. What if you have a short finger person like this that's just a little bit broader hand? All right, then you can say fiery, earthy type, right? And now, now you have a combination that is beyond what I told you. I said that if for a beginner's mind, you can take an earth hand, and you can put one of these four skin types and you got your category, right? Earth hand, earth fire, right? Are you still with me, Cynthia? Are you following my logic? Yeah. Okay. But then you can also do th crazy things like say, well, you're kind of somewhere in between an earth and a water hand with a little bit of fire. You can do that, but you got to look at a lot of hands to do that. Because human beings are not perfect, and this is not a perfect system. It's just to be able to get you to get the, the feeling of it. Yes, your fingers are pretty short, but the volume of information, or the volume of that hand has got more gravity. I don't know how else to show it to you. Okay. But just look at that compared to this. And look at the face. Look at your face compared to the people that I showed you. Fiery people have a fiery face. Earthy people have an earthy face. Earth water people have an earth water face. You have an earth water face. I just showed you. It's round and your body's round. And then you have this kind of shorter nature that gives you a little bit of fire. And then you have this, this very, very me-ish, egoistic, uh, self-centered uh, heart line that's in the fiery side. But see, that's the problem. You haven't had a hand analysis. So it's very difficult for you to see the combination in full because until you can get through the full hand analysis, you might make, you might pick apart the aspects of it. You have to see the full weight of it, which we're going to get to. So you just got to be patient until we get there. Okay. So what's interesting when you look about, if you are able to understand these energies, Let's say for the for the sake of Cynthia, if Cynthia wants to be fire earth. Fine, we'll put her fire earth with a, in a sensitive. That's okay to do that. I, I don't want to be, is what they told me. So to be clear, it's not like I want to be, but if you say that you have an older thing, in your opinion, that's fine too. Yeah, you're learning the, my perspective. That's what you're paying for, right? So, but let's just say for the sake of argument, because we like to argue, Cynthia, that fire earth is uh, the hand type you have. And let's say that that's a very, very, uh, it is provocative energy. 
Uh, it's powerful. It's moving like a bull in the china shop. That's what fire earth energy is. Now try to look at the combination of if you have a fire earth energy with somebody with air fire. How will be the chemistry? So what do you think? Right? So now you're looking at a chemistry set. Isn't that fun? So now you can start to imagine what would happen when different people, when, they, when you have a, a couple that shows up with a hand type, with another hand type, you can start to see the energies at play. All right? So you can start to see fire, earth energy going into air fire. What's the, going to be the dilemma of that? Two fiery people or there's still fire. Where's the water in the relationship? Where's the emotion in the relationship of love and surrender? Who is anybody surrendering? What happens if you have a water, air, and an air, water person together? All right. What you just imagine the, the dynamic there. So if you understand these archetypes, then you can start to understand the energy of the way that the universe is even functioning. And you can start to see the, the conflicts and symmetries that are in there. Now, I said, if you're going to do a hand analysis, you start in understanding the world that that person is by the hand type, right? You begin to understand the world. So we're putting, putting Cynthia, as I was saying, in a healer supportive world. And within that world, she's the self-centered one because of the fiery or the passionate one, all right? So I had to try to think hand type world. It's easier to kind of think of it that way. Try to think of this guy's world right here. And what his, what his world is all the time, air fire world. What is his habits that ge generate in his environment? What is his, his, uh, his, what is his agenda on a day-to-day -day basis? And what's it like being uh, and doing laundry with him? Right? That's the shape of the hand. That's the world. So you're talking about a very, very broad aspect of it. I even hesitate to even say you are this type, even though I see it on the face. But think of something grander, like the type of world that you tend to go to and the way that you see the world. And within that world, there's a soul that's trying to take, has an agenda to do something within that world. And within this world, there's this person here who's in this energy all the time. And when they express themselves, they do it in a either fiery way or watery way or polite, fair way or a standoffish way. That's how they express themselves. And when they think, they think either in, in a, a very deep, deep way, excuse me, and they think in a very deep, deep way and they can't stop thinking, just keeps going and going and going and going and going until, they, until you're making really funny abstract thinking. Or you think in a very sharp way. Junk. Or you, th you think in a very independent way because your head is separated from your lifeline. So you, you need a lot of space and freedom. Brent, so when you said think in a sharp way, what do you mean? So the headline's very short, isn't it? Yes, yes. What does that represent, though, if it's short? Quick thinking. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So when you get an answer out of them, when, it's, when you need an answer, it's going to be quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Versus a preoccupied answer. They literally, when they talk and give you an answer, they're looking either a thousand miles down. 
or somewhere in the back of their head. All right? You're not going to get that look from him. Very present-minded, very sharp, very fast because of the headline. So now you start to see we go down the rabbit hole in the dichotomy of hands that when you have a dichotomy, this is the way that the biologists view, is you start with phylum, gender, you know, kingdom, phylum, gender, finally look at the plants and the deciduous plants, which of the deciduous plants has bark and other ones don't. Right? So this is what we're doing here. We're categorizing human beings and we're seeing the attributes when you make these combinations. So let's look at uh, Tanya hand. Tanya, can you raise your hand? All right, what kind of, what kind of hand type do we have here? Lenny, what kind of hand? Lenny, are you still with us? Yes, yes. Um, so it looks a little bit fiery. Maybe there is some water or air in it, I think. So what makes you, uh, what makes you think she has a fire? I, I agree with you on the water and air. Or you can even say it's a little thicker too. You could even go water, earth, water, air, earth. Yeah, but and but the fire that there's a there's a there's a sweeping heart line that looks like a smile that just dramatically goes up. Yeah. Brent, mm -hmm. so can you do so do me a favor, please? Is it possible for you to take a screenshot mm -hmm. uh, and then just display it on your because I can't actually see it. Oh, I see because of the. Uh, your zoom is, is prioritizing all right so yes, let's and i don't know how to change it <laughs> it doesn't look like this is a setting to change it perfect thank you first off is the hand seaweed or not it's not, no, it's, not. it's not very seaweedy then it's more air and and the fingers are long Right. If they were short, then I would say, yeah, there was a more fiery nature. But I don't see those as very short fingers. I understand how you might see that because you were just going, well, they just kind of stopped by it right there. But this is a very elongated palm. And you got to look maybe at a lot of hands and experience that you go, wow, this is a very, very strong amount of intellect here. Long, long fingers, long palm. Long fingers, long palm. You can start to see. Yeah, that's going into the air. But there's also a very soft nature to the hand, isn't there? Imagine if you were to touch it and put a paper cut, would she, would she like the paper cut? Yeah, absolutely not. So there's a softness there. So now we got air and water. And there's a thickness to the hand. It's not so angular. Right? There's a, there's a, there's a, a fullness to the hand. So now we have to make an accommodation of air, water, earth. So now, now we go Kira Knightley meets uh, a little bit of enchant Enchantress. So we, if you look at the air, water, earth tribe, we still have a lot. I could even go water because uh, of the sensitivity is so strong. And sometimes the sensitivity within the hand type just is thrown at me. And I go, wow, you just... You're just water. I don't care what your hand is. You're so watery. You're so your skin is so soft. I got it's the most dominant aspect of you. But if we just look, that's that's our earth water, right? It's thick hand, right? That's our earth water. All right. Now we're looking at an air water hand. And now we're looking at an elegance, the power of elegance, water, air, or air, water. I don't have a very good uh, feminine example there. And the, but there's a fullness. So I'm I'm saying I'm feel I'm I'm looking at this hand going. It's somewhere between like that. Let's just pull up your the hand example. 
Now look at Kira and see how angular and how consciously deliberate that hand is, right? Do you see it's just kind of straight and it's kind of bony, right? There's not a boniness here with Tanya. There's a fullness, a softness. So I can't, I don't like even putting the air so strongly. It's completely softened now. She's rigid. There's a critic, critical perfectionistic side to that hand. It's got a very clear, precise, angular. When we want to go left, we go left. Here, let's softly go left. And whenever you do that, when you start to use the word soft, you're moving into the water character. character. So now I'm starting to go, wow, you're kind of a water and you've got a depth to your hand. And so I'm now starting to go, you're kind of intellectual, but you're very reflective as well. So if you look at these water earth people, they have a strong conscience. They have, uh, they, they reflect on and allow their in intuition to guide them. And that's why we find it in therapists and health advisors, also healers. So now we have a softer version, water earth. So if, if you want my opinion, I would say you're a water, air, earth, and I would say it almost at the same time. It's in balance. And you have a very fiery expression, and you have a, also a reserved side, as far as I see, right there. Kind of goes up and says, that's enough. That's fine. That's, that's fine for me. That's a private side. But if I go over to this one, it seems like it wants to make its way up even further, even up to the top there. But most of it, of, if I was on a canoe riding that river, I'd probably have to walk the canoe from here to the rest. So that's a much more guarded, private, loyal, reserved side. Here, if that, if that same amount of volume went all the way up here, then I would say, yeah, it's all intensity. Anytime she has a, an opinion that has to come out, that's the fiery side. But now it's understated. But you can, you can, you can, you can be it. It's just not as strong. Let's look at hand. All right. It's <laughs> I'm not sure I got a good, a good, good enough uh, zoomed in picture of hand, but let's see if I, uh, yeah, it's just my zoom isn't cooperating properly. So I'll, I'll zoom in on the one that I got. I did, I did a picture. Anyway, we're just looking at the basic hand type. So let's look at that. Uh, okay. Let's get my toolbar out of the way. All right, so the fingers are exceptionally short here. And there's not this kind of plumpness to the hand. All right, so uh, let's just go back to Cynthia. You see the plumpness, All right? So if this was a... Uh, uh, I'm trying to ma imagine like a pillow. See the pillow feeling over here? Earth water. Pillow. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't get a, if I had to sleep on this, I wouldn't feel like that's a very nice pillow. So the fiery, it's, it's fiery. The fingers are short. I can't say earthy uh, very much, even though this is very square. I like this. So there is a powerful squareness, but I, I tend to go more on the airy side. And, and that's the, the, and the reason why, or I would say just pure fire, because it's just playful, open. The skin, as I have observed, when I remember it, the skin is much more, it's not necessarily watery sensitive skin it's more airy skin 
So I, if I wanted to play with this combination, I might, I might just say pure fire and I'm fine with that. Move on. Cause I got a gazillion things in the reading over two hours. I got to talk about, but with the fire, um, just having fire and being able to recognize fire play fire needs novelty and is constantly on the go and creative. Now I add fire air to that. And if I add the, the skin quality, if I just, I mean, if I'm being pure here guys, but if I just add fire and then the skin quality and not try to make that any further combination, then we have a, a a playful, open nature, all right? So you don't get the feminine necessarily in fire air, like we saw with Tanya, right? And it's just a lot of fun, it's positivity, lucky, happy-go-lucky energy, ingenious ways of expressing themselves. They hate boredom, predictability, and risk uncertainty for growth. Fast. And now if we extend the length of the fingers, we get preoccupied, air fire. Now we have fire, which was, means that they have a much more impulsive, outgoing, free, easy, highly curious nature. They're ruled by the spirit and the mind to have hot ideas. Seek the jackpot. So they make great transformational coaches, pioneers, entrepreneurs, even comedians. It can be really fun, funny, quick, fire. My, my favorite talk show host of them all is Craig Ferguson. What you don't find with this, this tribe is this hospitable group, generally speaking, right? You don't find the, the part where you go in and if you open the uh, the door to the children's daycare, you won't find these guys opening the door for you, generally speaking. Why? Right? Or manager, uh, in general, managers, it's a very different breed of managers, even though it, it happens. And it, with, with Han, I give her a little bit more managerial skill because her hand has a little bit broad uh, for this tribe. That one on her left hand, especially, is more broad, giving her more managerial quality, more supportive quality. Maybe the mother side comes out to handle the logistics and, the, and handle all that stuff better. But look at her face, look at her uh, hand, and just look at the, the energy here. Just the, that, that energy, just everything just goes my way. Be with those kids, it's all good, it's fun. She saw this group, she was backpacking. She's not working in childcare, but she was backpacking uh, in Tibet and there was a earthquake and she she said this school needs a lot of help and so she came back and three months later her whole life changed she became the event organizer to raise money for this this uh this school and raised a hundred thousand in three months that's what a fire air person does they start that year with one thing and then three months later on completely else it's a fire airy thing So they have an easygoing, curious side. Okay. Uh, running short. Of, oh, we're way over. Uh, are we over? I'm not sure are we over. 12, 12 uh, 1, 3. Yeah. Uh, let's go Lenny for the sake and let's finish it. Lenny. Lenny, are you there? Yes. Can you show your beautiful hand so we can take a stab at you? Yeah. Okay, back it up a little bit, please. Uh, there you go. All right, that's pretty good. So now let's go back to this. Within the tribe we have, let's, let's review our cast of characters. We had a earth water, 
we have a air watery earthy person we have a fire air person now what do we got here that that hand looks is it rough is it intellectual what's is it uh fiery crazy lines everywhere or is it soft looks soft to me yeah soft now we have a water and they it, the lines are uh are sorry the length of the fingers are also very long so see the similarity here between this hand and that hand very similar air water right and here we do have a uh, much more uh, passionate heart line as it goes up. You can't really see it, but I've, I've seen Lenny's hands. So it's a much more uh, intense, provocative energy, even though you may not have witnessed it, it's there. So that it, I would say is a soft, it's air, water, and you can even say water, earth too. You could go all, all that direction, right? To get the energy. And that's all we are right now is energy and the life. So again, I might I might go the same direction as as I went here. Just a very deep intellectual person is very good in in the water earth, uh, you know, in the therapeutic area as well as being very kind and and gentle and smart and and, and being able to handle people well in a very gentle, but smart way, sophisticated way. All right, now you get into a different. And then you add, and, and then as soon as I do that, and I'm really talking what this conversation that we're having right now is for me generally about one minute within the reading, one to two minutes, but we have to talk about it for a lot in order for you to see so your brain can begin to go, okay, within this tribe, now let's go deeper. And so we can start to arrive at a picture or in the hologram that we're work working in, what the hologram wants to do. So here we have, a, we have long fingers, definitely long fingers, intellectual, reading, learning, but then softness. So she's still connected to her, her emotions and then earthy because it's a little bit thicker. I could, I could put my head on it. I might have to change pillows halfway through the night, but I could put my head on it. It's still soft. But if I had a pillow to lean on, I'd, I'd lean on that one. Oh, squishy Cynthia. Supportive, kind, you know, that's the energy and working with instinctive. And then you're within that, that's, there's the fiery heart. Okay. All right. So there's your, there's your deal on. Attendez uh, minute, s'il vous plaît. That's it on the elemental energy. So, guys, I'm going to close now. I got to jump anyway to the next appointment. So I'll catch you next week. Thank See you. Ya. Thank you so much, Brent. Just Thank very quickly.